Talk UK once again somewhere in North London location 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 2020 keeping it lots <laughs> remember subscribe and for the first time in 2020 uh, I'm really created with uh, the big man he's back in the building yes Mr. Dean White where you been hiding man what's happening I've been in the gym B um, been in the office in the gym New Year Health, wealth, prosperity, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get busy, man. Um, been signing a few boys. Um, and, and I'm in the gym with a, a lot of them as well, you know, just make sure they're doing this stuff. The ones that are down here, obviously there's boys in Birmingham. I plan on going there on the weekend and you know, maybe doing a session with them. We'll just see where they're at. I like to keep on top of the boys, you know, because obviously if I'm trying to get them out and get them fired, I want to know that they're actually doing what they're bloody meant to be doing in the gym and they're looking the part, you know. Um, so really, I've just been in the gym, been in the office, making meetings, and making progress. 2020 should be a real, real barnstorm. I should have a few boys out in March and April and so on. So yeah, been, been, been very, very busy. I'm just trying to imagine Dean White, you know, heading to an office and uh, shirt and tie and, um, you know, a briefcase, heading to the office like an exec. I'm, just, I'm trying to ima imagine that boss mode, you know. Well, I don't know about all of that, but my <laughs> office is the gym. Um, and then obviously there's spaces I use maybe. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, the boys, the boys. I mean, I've been in the Peacock quite a lot recently as well. A few of the boys sparring, watching them, and just all over, really. You know what I mean? Well, since the last time I've seen you, uh, obviously it's been a little um, while now. But obviously, Andrew Ruiz, he, he uh, told Manny Robles to, to do uh, one, do one, basically, and um, he's been out there doing a lot of talking. And, and the major talk, which is sparked off Dylan White, was um, he's saying that Dill doesn't want no smoke. I mean, did you catch a wind of that by any chance? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. But listen, it is what it is, isn't it? Those boys, they, you know, um, he's he's probably trying to be a man and man up. Obviously, Dill was talking about the Snickers and he's a fat boy. He probably is eating, what's he eating? Nachos and whatever kind of garbage he eats. Do you know what? For me, uh, I respect... Uh, Andrew is for what he's done. He came and made himself the first Mexican heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, Ate himself into a position where he wasn't um, in the best physical shape he could have been to go and retain those titles. But saying that, you can't really take that away from AJ also because he came in the lightest he's ever been. Sharp, razor jab, dancing around like Muhammad Ali, you know what I'm saying? And went and boxed his head off and became two-time world champion. So for me, when you're talking about uh, Ruiz and that, I've got to give him his credit because I'm a man who, uh, you know, I'm a fan of boxing and I give credit where credit's due to the people who, you know, work their socks off. But what's happened with him is, like a lot of fighters who have made them obscene amount of numbers, it's got to him. You see how much cars this guy's bought? He bought a big old mansion, he bought, you know, he's living the dream he only could have dreamed of as a kid coming up. And, and many fighters could have dreamed to have been in that position to get that money and do what he's doing now. So it's always going to change people. Sometimes it doesn't look... Look at Conor McGregor. He made 100 million. He kind of went off the pond, won for a bit, came back, had another fight. And he was. it's only now after a few years that he's literally getting himself back together because he's probably saying, you know what, my passion and love for the sport, you know, I'm going to get myself back in there. But back to Andy now, I think that fight with him and Dillian is a hell of a hell of a fight. Um, you know, Andy, very fast hands, he's got slow feet, good puncher, as we saw, you know, in that fight uh, against Joshua. But then, yet yeah, again, we saw on the other hand, um, how to dispatch of uh, Andy Ruiz. You saw Joshua, you know, kept it long, moved around. Andy needs to plant his feet to tee off his shots. And he's a very good um, um, cumulative puncher where he puts his shots together really well. But for me, I think... Like, as a manager speaking, as someone who advises people to do something, personally, I wouldn't look at that fight for my brother Dillian. That's just me. Um, I get it, because it's a big money fight, it's a mega showdown, it would do tremendous pay-per-view numbers, and the cameraman wants to prove himself as a true, you know, true two top contender, so he wants to fight all these boys. But when you look at the position he's in, 
he's you know he's he's mandatory number one or you know interim world champion. Um, shortly down the line, we've got a mega fight again coming up February the twenty second in Las Vegas, Wild and Fury two. So those boys are six seven and six nine respectively. So when you look at that, I look at the likes of Povetkin, the likes of Andy Ruiz, even the likes of Michael Hunter as you know dear boy i know he's trying to get as much smoke as he can i give him credit because he got he, he that, that that boy got it from the mud he ain't messing about he is someone who has got such heart and determination and, and desire and he's like deals in some respect you know like he, he, he wants all the smoke he ain't messing about he saw what he done to Vivekin and then he managed to pull off an amazing upset and knock him out in the first round so those kind of boys they're bringing it back to that those kind of boys they don't match the mold they're not the people you are going to prepare you for the likes of Deontay Wilder or a Tyson Fury. So for me, I'd be looking at boys who are 6'5", you know, Trevor Bryant. Otto maybe. Wallen? I did initially have a think of Otto Wallen, but he's southpaw. So that actually, that's like double work unnecessarily, if you get my meaning. So no, not Otto Wallen because of that southpaw. It's going to be a lot more trickier with the likes of him. But, you know, initially I did think of someone like him. Um... You could, um, like I said, Trevor Bryant is someone that he's high up in the WBA's ranking. I think he's one of the mandatories over there to fight for the regular title. That like Manuel Charles. Manuel Charles is just a little bit too small, possibly, as well. But you want to be looking at 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Um, if Tom Swartz was good enough for Tyson Fury, he's another one that could go in the mix. You could try and use his distance. You could try and go in there and do a few rounds of him and see if you can get him out of there. The likes of those type of boys. There's another guy from... I think he's from Germany, America, Canadian, no, Canadian, German. Um, he's 6'5", I can't remember his name, is it not Bordin, Bordin or something like that, I can't remember right now. Well, anyway, him also, he, he's defeated, but it, it's all it, all it boils down to me is that you can go out there and practice stuff and work on range, dealing with the taller man and stuff like that, like he fought Marius Watt, you know what I mean? Marius Watt was like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, very tall, very good jab. And he came in the best he's ever, you know, coming as far as I'm prepared because he had a lot of notice. He was prepared to fight at the end of November of last year. And when he got the call, he jumped at the chance because he's thinking, well, you know, I've seen Dillian online. He doesn't seem like he's that motivated. He's been out. He's had a lot of trouble and stress. And he's probably felt like I can capitalise on this. But luckily, you know, you know, Dillian's d determination and grit pulled through. Um, and he's done some good stuff in there. He knew that he was a bit too overweight to do the rounds um, convincingly and as, and as good as he liked. But, you know, he took a bit, a few silly shots in there also. But this is heavyweight boxing. You're not going to go to the pool and not get wet. So, at the end of the day, people do criticise and say stuff. But, yet again, the can man went in there and done it when he was probably like at 5 or 6%. When he comes in April or May of this year, you know, you will see a totally new Dillian White. He's going to be strong. He's going to be a lot more explosive. Um, and, and he's going to do, do a good job. But I just hope that he fights someone of similar mode that would enable him to be bet better and best prepared to defeat the likes of Tyson Fury and um, Deontay Wilder. You mentioned Deontay Wilder, and I've seen a report of late with him saying that Dillian is the cheerleader of the division and that he's had his chances to fight mm -hmm. him. And um, for one reason or, or, or another, it hasn't happened or he hasn't taken his chance. I mean, what do you make of Wilder's comments? Do you know what? Not being funny, it, he's not really no one. You shouldn't. You're not meant to be dictating. You're not the sanctioning bodies. You don't dictate who he fights. I'm sure like he doesn't dictate who you fight. You fought many guys who you chose to fight on your team wanted to fight. So just like Dillian did the same approach. So this is a business, and the fights what he has chosen. You know there was there was there was there was there was a lot of risk in some of them, but then they had benefits. The upsides were there were pay-per-view fights. They did extremely and tremendous numbers. Um, some of them were great for ranking. Some of them were great for him because they're scouts of previous rivals that fought them that did stuff what he didn't do in there. You know, like what he did stuff what they didn't do in there. Like you know, being the first to drop Jose Parker um, on multiple occasions. You know what I mean? And um, pulling through that, and that was a it's a third former world title holder. Just the same as putting um, Lucas Brown to sleep, who's a former world champion as well, who was undefeated to sleep. The same, you know, as Derek Chisora. There's things he's done in there. Um, a lot of people have have not Chisora over the years, but he under the tutelage of David Hay, 
in his team, being his manager, manager, those guys have come together so good. You've seen how good Chazor has been performing. He's managed to find a new lease of life. He's, he's, he's pulled himself together and um, he gets in, you know, he gets in really good shape. So, you know, when, when you look at that, those are actually very, very good wins. A lot of people say um, Chazor is the gatekeeper, but look, he's been smoking the likes of Takam, Takam, who's been giving a lot of people smoke, you know, over the, over the last few years. He gave Joshua Hill before the fight was stopped prematurely, I might add. Um, and, you know, what's his face? Chazor, you know, you know, categorically ended that fight. Spilka, you know, wiped his wiped his dish and plate totally clean, and he just continued to prove a lot of people wrong. He he, he dispatched David Price also, um, but you know that like, what I'm saying is, all of these when you add it up, it shows you how far the likes of Dillian White has come from um, on this journey. And, and how much he's, he, he's, he's, he's progressed in his career. So he wants all the smoke and it's always good. Um, and I think, you know, I just feel like he, he, he should be a smart chap and uh, not sit it out, but pick the right fights that are going to help him anyway. Was it um, what you're saying? Was there any accuracy in what you're saying? Was like Dillian given the chance to fight uh, Wilder by obviously fighting Ortiz first you know, and Dominic yeah, Brazil. I, I hear what he's saying. He said, if you fought Ortiz, then this would happen. But then what I was trying to break down to you with why certain fights made sense and certain fights mm -hmm. didn't make sense, you know, it seemed like I was on a rant, but if you understood, it's business why some of those fights and the business side of, of what it was, was good for, you know, the UK. Like fighting yeah. Chisora twice was good for UK boxing. Fighting Ortiz once would probably be bad for UK boxing because there's no hostility, he doesn't talk English, he's talking through an interpreter. There's so many negatives in that side, you know? And then on top of it, I feel that him fighting Ortiz after him coming off two defeats for his world title shot didn't make sense anyway. Why the hell would you want to fight someone who had been defeated two times, not once, two times, and then give them the opportunity to say, you know, get in the way of you getting in the middle of your title shit. It doesn't make any sense. He needs to go and rebuild, just like everyone else does when they lose. Three years, two years, come back and get your opportunity. But no, he was given another one very quickly. As quickly as they give him that, they could have given Dillian his shot. But listen, this is the sport of boxing. I don't know everything. This is just my opinion. I read, I educate myself, and obviously I'm around the sport very closely. But this is just an opinion I have. And what I see, or maybe my bro tells me stuff but like I said I take things um, with a pinch of salt in many directions and I put it together I've got my own mind and opinion so I form my own opinion you know obviously it is difficult um, how long he's been out and he's been waiting but then at the same time like you're saying they're saying well if you fought this guy you would have got your shot but who knows what they're saying and like I said you can't dictate to anyone to say who you fight and who you don't fight you know Mentioned Deontay Wilder, finally. Um, mm -hmm. There's been a lot of talk of poor, poor ticket sales for the fight, Fury versus Wilder. Mm -hmm. um, would you make of these um, rumours of the fight not really being, um, uh, well, not selling, as it were? Do you know what? I don't know. The two guys, you know, Deontay Wilder, when you look at his profiles risen since he has fought Fury, they're both profiles have risen since they fought each other. Um, Tyson Fury wasn't the biggest ticket seller here. He didn't really sell out arenas and, you know, you know, do too great with the numbers here in the beginning. So I know there's a big Irish fan base and contingency in America. Um, but, you know, from the last fight, I think they've had, what, is it 7,000 they sold the last fight or something like that? Um, you know, if they could do a little bit more, that would be good. But it is, it's, it's quite a tricky one, man. You know, like, there's only Pacific people who are going to do good numbers abroad and you know so for the likes of those two I think maybe it's you know if they can do 10,000 I think that's really really good or if they can even match what they did before but I don't know if they if they're promoting it as they should be if you get my meaning it's, it's not everywhere I go when you look at matchroom shows it's literally everywhere you go you know what I mean you see it there you see advertisement you see this you know that I've seen them doing um stuff in America where they run certain shows and stuff but I couldn't tell you. I wouldn't be surprised if the numbers are poor, to be honest. Lastly, 
can Tyson Fury do it? Can he knock Deontay Wilder out in um, two rounds? Hell no. No, 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 no. Hell to the no, no, no. <laughs> but check this. What I would say is, he's not noted for his power. He's a big guy. He has power because cumulative, he does get people out of there. Um, I, I want him to win. I'll be rooting for him to win because he's a UK fighter. Um, saying that, Deontay Wilder, hats off to him as well because he's, what, 42? You know? 42, 43? 42. Uh, and one, one, and yeah, a, I know one job, but yeah. I'm saying he's still undefeated. That's what I mean. You, you get the picture, yeah? Um, so, can man, bean man, dustbin man, builder, whoever he's fought, he's still not there. He be jeebies out of those suckers. You know what I mean? So, give him a bit of credit, and he's done good, and he's, he's, he's defended his belt on multiple occasions, you know? So, it's going to be interesting. In this fight, it's potentially one of those ones where he's learnt, he's going to be a lot better. I heard people saying how, how poor he was in that fight, I'm not too sure about that. I believe it was Tyson Fury that, you know, the movement, the, 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 the feints and the, the movement what gave him a lot of trouble, you know. It's, a, it's, a, it's one of them flippable coin. It's either he's gonna come out a lot faster and saying to himself, you know what, I potentially believe I've got, I've got, I know I've got the power to knock him out because I've dropped him twice. If I start earlier, I might get the job done. So if he starts faster, there might be a different result. If he tries to sit back and, and lets Tyson Fury dictate with the jab, I think he's in for a long night. And Tyson Fury beats him like he did the first time, and they bumped him. Excuse me. Dean White, it's been a pleasure once more to catch up. Hopefully, Thanks very much, man. Hopefully, it'll be, um, the next time will be a lot sooner. Mr. Dean White, Pep Talk. Stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you.